Please find a comfortable posture. Better to keep your back straight as much as you can. Gently close your eyes. Now send your loving thoughts towards yourself, thinking, may I be well, may I be happy, may I be peaceful. If you know how to love yourself, it is much easier for you to love others. Now send your loving thoughts towards your family. Now send your loving thoughts towards whole world. May all living beings be well, be happy, be peaceful. <clears throat> Thank you.
Now slowly turn your attention to the subtle sensation of the breath. Every breath you take in, you take out, is taken mindfully. No need to repress your thoughts, no need to control your thoughts, let them be or let them go.
How do you feel? What do you see? What do you understand? Now observe your mind, observe your body, your body is relaxed, your mind is calm, tranquil and peaceful. 
Make a strong determination to practice meditation every day, regularly, with diligence and patience. Understand how important this meditation practice to keep yourself well, happy, peaceful and balanced. May peace be with you. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. Thank you very much. Please open your eyes. Okay, let's do our chanting. <clears throat> Namo tassa bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato Ar <coughs> Sambuddhas Namo Tass Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhas Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sangang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Sangang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Sangang Saranang Gachami Anicca Vata Sankara Uppada Vaya Dhammino Uppajitva Nirujjanti Te Sang Vupa Samusuko Sabbe Santa Avera Hontu Sabbe Santa Abhya Panja Hontu Sabbe Santa Aniga Hontu Sabbe Santa Sukiyatanam pariharantu Manupubhanga madamma Manusetta manomaya Manasache paduttena Bhasativa karotiva Tato nang dukkha man veti Chang kang padang Mano pumbang madamma Mano setta mano maya Manasache pasanine Bhāsativā karotivā Tato nang sukha manveti Chāyāv anapāyini Should I speak or act? Happy to 
We believe. We believe in generosity towards others. We believe in the skill of the world and that's marked by generosity. We believe in generosity has many levels. Think generously, speak generously, act generously. We believe in generosity is the heart of our spiritual practice. And the practice allows us to become more open to accepting and forgiving. We believe in sending generosity to ourselves and others, to protect the way of the vision, to bring joy, and nurturing the spiritual community for your discovery. My wish. Good morning, everybody. Happy to see you all. Um, when we are living in this world, whatever we see, whatever we hear, when we are using our senses, always we experience something, and also short term and long term we are learning something beautiful when we are really watching and observing. Something came to my mind today. Uh, long time ago, I think uh, 20 years ago, I, even before I start this temple, I used to live with a family uh, in Kerry, husband and wife, uh, two children, uh, three and four that time. Bill, remember, right, Bill? They are very little. Now they are grown kids. And so one day I was doing the babysitting when pa parents are not home. I'm the babysitter too, that time. I think I'm the only Buddhist monk did that, <laughs> babysitting. So one day, uh, it's very interesting, this little girl, she's I think three years old, still she's on diaper. Uh, so I was doing the babysitting, she got an accident or something, she went to the bathroom, parents are not there. And so she needs some help to clean. And so I'm the only person and the little boy, John Paul, we all three home. Now with this little girl being in the bathroom, she's screaming at me. Uh, Suni, please come and help me and help me to clean. <clears throat> I never done this kind of job before <clears throat> and changing somebody's diapers. And so standing next to the bathroom, I am breathe in and breathe out. I'm thinking, oh my God, what I'm going to do now? I don't know what to do even, <laughs> right? And so I'm so nervous and I never did that before. Now I'm thinking that little boy came to me and looking at me because I'm so... Uh, nervous to do the job, he just looking at me and he just said, Bhante, just do it. <laughs> right? That's what he said. Now I think he's 27 or 28 years old. He said, just do it. Just do it. Then I was kind of listening his word, just do it. I, I realized something suddenly. Yes, that's true. Just do it. It's not a big deal. Then I did the perfect job. <laughs> I learned actually, and so it's very interesting. She will be here this evening. <laughs> Don't ask her. She she feel <laughs> she feels so shy right now when I say that. And it's very interesting. I think there is a strong teaching. Just do do it. Not too much thinking. You know why I said this story. You know, last two weeks I was traveling. I was in Pennsylvania and uh, New Jersey. And one of uh, my meditation class, one one lady, and she said, I am practicing meditation last 15, 16 years. I said, how wonderful, you know, it's a great thing, right? No, Bhante, I'm very um, confused, you know, even doing many years, I don't see any progress. I don't see any progress. So I feel a little disappointed. Then I was thinking for a moment, then I said to her, five days, you know, starting today, don't do your meditation. I said, don't do meditation at all. So then she asked what it means. I said, don't do it. That's it. <laughs> don't do it five days. Then I just walk away. 
And uh, then I said, after five days, you can call me. And she did. Then I asked, how do you feel now? Oh my God, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> I'm happy. You know, better than before. <laughs> she, she said. Then I said, don't do it. <laughs> so the problem is, you are keep trying to do the meditation. Because why every day you are doing some work? Every day you want to accomplish something. You have a goal. You want to reach to that goal. When you come to meditation, people think, I had to do it. Then you are putting so much energy into why you are stressed out, you have problems, you have challenges, then you have an idea, just doing meditation, I can overcome these problems. Sometimes when you are putting so much energy and effort to do it, you don't get the result. Say, oh, no need to do it. You know, we say we are doing meditation, but in reality, there is no such thing. Most of people who say, I'm doing meditation, I don't see the progress. So I call them cushion addicts. You have seen that some people are so good when they are sitting on the cushion. Two things I have seen. You know, I, this is not a criticism, this is my observation. Two things I will see, M more hours people are sitting on the cushion, they are sleeping, number one. <laughs> and after that I'm asking, how was your meditation? Oh, it was great. That means great sleep. <laughs> and so, then other people, other group people, you know, keep trying to do it, then they feel disappointed. So, when you are sitting on the cushion, I don't think you are doing meditation, you are training yourself. So when you are trying to receive something, you don't get it. The moment you give up, you receive it. Now think about, she didn't do meditation five days. Now I said, now your meditation is working. Make sense to everybody? So another beautiful story came to my mind. You know, maybe I shared this story before too. Uh, it's a very old story, like maybe uh, 1500 years old. And after the Buddhism spread out the different countries, uh, the Mahayana tradition also started. Uh, there was a great couple of great monks uh, came to uh, the society because of the Mahayana tradition. One greatest sage, his name was uh, Asanga. His name is Asanga. He's a great sage. He did lots of books and things. And um, he was the great professor in the greatest Buddhist university was in uh, India. It's called the Nalanda University. Now, three, you know, uh, Islamic extremists put the fire on this library. And this whole library burned three months. That means that many books were there. Uh, so this monk was teaching in this college. So his name is Asanga. So after he became a monk, he was thinking, within two years, I am going to achieve my extreme ultimate happiness, which is enlightenment or nirvana. So he worked so hard two years, every single day, non-stop, he is putting his energy to meditate. So he wants to attend to the enlightenment. And also, he wants to experience the qualities of Maitriya Bodhisattva. You heard that word, Maitriya Bodhisattva is the person who become the Buddha next, in the future Buddha. Okay, his name is a Maitriya Bodhisattva. Um, so, he wants to experience, he wants to see, after two years of strong uh, practice, he wants to experience the Maitri Bodhisattva. Then he did it two years, didn't work. Now what happened? Disappointed. Then he was thinking, no, I, I don't like this, I'm going to give up. He get out from the you know forest. While he is coming down from the mountain, he saw the water dropping. You know, from the big rock, you know, drop by drop, water has a little kind of big, um, like a pond made from water. Then he was looking at this top, you know, top of the rock. There is a beautiful little pond created. Then he was thinking, how many thousands and millions of years took to make this big hole? That means if you want to do something, gain something, we had to work hard. Then he thought, looking at that, he was observing, he went back to the forest. He was doing another two years of the meditation to see and experience the Maitriya Bodhisattva. No clue. Right? No clue. Now he was so upset. Now he was thinking, no, I don't want to do that. He was get out from the forest, coming down. 
Then he saw a crow as a bird try to find his nest because two rocks came together like this. He cannot go inside his nest. What this crow is doing, rubbing this rock using his one wing to make the hole bigger. <laughs> Monks just saw it. Then he was thinking, oh my God, he never give up. He keep trying because he wants to see his baby. I had to go back. He went to the forest and did another two years. No clue. Doesn't work. So now he is coming out. And so he is give up and coming out. Then he saw elderly man using a feather, rubbing a big uh, uh, iron bar, like rubbing it from a feather. <laughs> so then he asked, what are you doing? Then this old man said, I need a knife. I want to make a knife. So what I am doing, I want to reduce this iron. That's what I am doing and rubbing using this feather to make it small. Then this monk, Asanga, start to laugh. You are foolish. How long it take for you to make a knife rubbing a big you know, iron bar using a feather? Then he said, I am not in a such a hurry. I have time. I have patience. I can do it. He keep doing it, ignoring that monk. So then he was thinking, oh my God, I am not the monk. He is the monk. He has patience. He has an effort. He has a courage. He wants to do it. Therefore, I had to go back. He did another two years. He wants to say, Maitriya Bodhisattva. No clue. Now think about so disappointed. He came back. Now he is walking in the street. Very disappointed. <clears throat> he saw sick dog. Very sick. Wounded. In pain. So, then he tried to clean this dog because he has a wounded, lots of worms are there. He tried to clean. Every time he is using the, his fingertips to clean his dog, because he is very compassionate, he realized this dog has more pain. Why? His t- I mean, uh, fingertips are so rough for the wound. So then he was more compassionate. He was thinking it doesn't work. He kneeled down using his tongue. He is removing those worms. The moment he is doing that, white light appear from this wound. There is a shining, beautiful Maitriya Bodhisattva appeared in front of him. Then he asked, who are you? (laughs) The monk asked, who are you? Then, I am the Maitriya Bodhisattva. How many years you are looking for me? You know, I am here now. Then he was so mad with him. How many years I was looking for you? I worked so hard. Every time when I give up, go back two years and two years and two years, how many years I did it? You didn't appear where you were. Where you were? Then Maitreya Bodhisattva answered, I was right here, you didn't see me. I was right here, but you didn't see me. Why? His effort is too much to see it. Now he got it. Now he experienced his beauty in herself. Then he was so happy what he received. Then he asked from the Maitreya Bodhisattva to pay my respect and gratitude. Is it okay, this painful, sick, smelly dog carrying on my shoulder and walk around the city to pay my respect? Because this is my Maitriya Bodhisattva. Now he thinks, dog is my Maitriya Bodhisattva. Then Maitriya Bodhisattva says, sure, do whatever you feel, right? Then what he is doing? This sick, smelly dog carrying on his shoulder, he is walking around all over the city, joyfully happy, you know, telling, I received, I saw Maitriya Bodhisattva, I saw Maitriya Bodhisattva. Now think about, I am carrying a sick dog and maybe dead almost. Maybe I don't know how what people are thinking about it. You know, maybe, you know, you are very compassionate to dogs here, maybe you have a different attitude, but sometimes other countries people are not. So then he's carrying this sick dog all over the city. People start to laugh. What's wrong with you? You know, why you are carrying this sick dog? Then monk said, I am not carrying a sick dog. 
I am carrying a Maitriya Bodhisattva. But he thinks he is carrying a Maitriya Bodhisattva. But people think? People think he is carrying a sick dog. So then another old grandma type of lady came and said, Hey son, what's wrong with you? You are not carrying a, bodhi, carrying a Maitri a Bodhisattva. No, this is a sick dog. Then he said, Grandma, no, this is not the sick dog. This is a Maitri a Bodhisattva. I am carrying a Maitri a Bodhisattva. There's a two less. After you receive great wisdom, other people think definitely you are crazy. I have many experiences like that. So after I receive something, I said, you know, I go to somebody and said, you know, I realized this last night. Definitely people think I'm crazy. Most of the time people are thinking crazy. So then two things I can do. One thing, I can challenge, no, I'm not crazy. Or I can say, yeah, I'm crazy and join to their party. That's the two options I have. So, now what I am thinking, for my practice, you ask yourself this question, thousand people come to you and say, you are doing something wrong, don't go to that stupid blue lotus temple, it doesn't have any benefit for you, it is a cult. In the beginning some people said that, I am a cult leader here. We have those issues, right? So, now I am asking, in your spiritual journey, no, no need to tell me what you are going to say. Hold your family, hold your friends, telling you, you are crazy, you are doing something bad. Even my family, my people coming to me and say, you are doing crazy, nobody cannot sell it for me anymore. Why? Nobody cannot change. Because I don't have any doubts about my spiritual journey. I'm very clear about it. Therefore, nobody cannot change my mind. So now I want to see, don't try so hard. If you are trying so hard, you don't see your inner beauty. After you see it, don't try to convince to other people, I am doing so well. So convince to yourself. So then other people think, you are crazy? Take it. Yes, I am crazy. I am happy about my craziness. If they are unhappy about my craziness, that's their craziness. You know, that's not my problem. <laughs> so how beautiful that story. There is lots of things to think about. And so, now these days in Sri Lanka, having issues. Right after the corona, we don't have the dollars in the country, gas lines, and you know, no power, and going through, you know, all the countries going through once in a while like that, politician, lots of things we can complain about. So these days, uh, more than a month, young people, especially, doing the pre peaceful protest, asking to the whole government and politician to leave, and they want to have a new person. So, the, you know, the, I'm always updating, I'm not into politics, but I want to update myself what is happening in the country. So, one morning, when I was watching a video, uh, you know, in the social media, I saw one man giving a talk. He said, sometimes we have tension with all the minorities and majority, any countries there. So, some, you know, the extremists, they destroy one of the big Buddha statue. So then people got mad about it. Then all that tension came with those two groups. Then one Buddhist boy, young man, he is telling this, you know, the protest. These are the politicians doing, you know, making the conflict among the people. In future, somebody come to our temple in my village, destroy my Buddha statue of the temple. Even that, I am not going to destroy or attack to the other people. Even somebody destroy the head of the Buddha, destroy our temple. I never go and attack. We never go and attack to any other people. So when I see that, you know, now think about it. even I am 40 years of being a monk, I, when I hear that, I was upset. That means another way to understand. That means anybody can destroy, you know, all the religious sites, you know, it's not a big deal. That's a message in the surface I got. Then, after a few days, my nature, I'm processing all those things. I was processing. One night, I realized, in the last minute before I'm falling asleep at night, I realized what he said is right. Perfectly right. I don't know how many people get it. 
what he was trying to tell the way i understand the statue at the temple is not the buddha that's what people made but where is the real buddha we have peace in the community with among respect into each other or each community it doesn't matter their color their shape it doesn't matter what religion they are coming from it doesn't matter so that is the place buddha is standing not in the statue so therefore if somebody destroying the statue thing of the buddha if i get upset because of that that is the hurting to the buddha you know the one celebrity monk you know the ajahn brahm recently he somebody asked from him if i remember right he said if you see somebody put your religious book into the toilet and flush like a buddhist book some people are getting really upset right in like a quran or bible or put into the you know toilet and flush you know people get upset if you see any buddhist you know the scriptures put into the toilet and somebody flush how do you feel it then ajahn brahm says a you know monk he said i am totally fine with that they can do that but they cannot do my practice and my spiritual journey they cannot flush how powerful that teaching so therefore don't attach to these things really practice within yourself don't put so much effort then you can see the truth then you are free person but we always has to respect to this religious symbol i think that's a good thing but same time somebody destroying it but don't let your mind to destroy it based on their activities i think that's a beautiful practice of the buddha i think that is the meditation for me any questions <laughs> any thought right right yeah uh, yes that's right you know then he, first he said first thing i call a plumber <laughs> then he is telling that what i said right you know nobody can flush my mind how beautiful that i really like what he said it's really great teaching so anything else rebecca <laughs> okay anybody new today new 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 person first timers okay now so today is our big day and big birthday party here uh, you know I, i hope you are coming if not you know please join in in spirit and we have big parade and monks are okay yeah
register on Eventbrite, which you can access through our website. And that's it. Yeah. One more thing I want to let you know, the, the Vesaka Day is a family event. You can bring your children and hold your family, no problem. And also one more thing, you can see we installed two beautiful uh, stained glasses. Um, we are going to do eightfold path. It's another way to teach for the people. We Somebody did the first and the middle of the lotus uh, representing enlightenment. We have another seven to go. If anybody interested, you know, a couple of people together, sponsor one piece, uh, name of your family, name of your departed one, or receive birthday blessing, or whatever uh, course you want to follow. I'm really grateful because we have another seven pieces to take. I really like those. It came perfect. It's so beautiful. You can see that, how beautiful that lotus flower. Right? So we have seven more pieces if anybody interested to support. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Please stand up.